Hello again, fellow Mystery Files. Today I continue my ranking of all 19 Albert Campion novels written by Marjorie Allingham with the top 10. And these top 10 are all pretty strong. I don't know if any of them really rise to the rank of like truly elite mystery novels, even the top few choices, which I think are fantastic. And I do think Allingham's best titles are just simply outmatched by the other Queens of Crime's best titles, as well as the best from other authors. But I still think these are pretty good and definitely worth the read. As always, there may be spoilers ahead, but I will notify you when one is coming, and you can skip around with the chapter titles as need be. Before I begin, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. And let's begin at number 10 with an early Campion novel that my opinion of steadily grows more and more positive over time, and that is Look to the Lady. And I've always enjoyed Look to the Lady, which is a great blend of mystery and adventure thriller. Campion comes across uh, the assistance of his friend Val Girth, who is an heir to the Girth Chalice, which is a historical item of lore. It's very valuable, and there are a lot of secret traditions and customs surrounding it. I enjoy the tone of this book, as well as like this almost like King Arthurian atmosphere about it. This is the kind of thriller I think Marjorie Allingham does well, and I appreciate. It's not bogged down with like vague political intrigue and bizarre events like we see in like a Christie thriller. And we don't have a series of just like ludicrous events here. I mean, the Girth Chalice is the target of a gang of professional thieves, and there's a lot of Campion and the Girths, and which by the way, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing their name correctly. It could be like Garth or something. I'm not really sure. And they're moving the chalice around from like place to place. It's not really defending it from like invaders. Like this was some kind of like middle aged plot here. And it's a lot of fun. And this book is just so much fun. And I love the way Allingham actually has a defined plot here. As I alluded to earlier, these thrillers sometimes get out of hand and just meander from place to place. But Look to the Lady is well grounded and has a coherent plot. There's also a mystery involving the death of Val's eccentric aunt, who died after offending the chalice. She was photographed with it, which is like a major faux pas and an insult. The family is very upset with her over it. And Look to the Lady is just a very fun read. I don't have it higher on the list because I think the top nine like do more interesting and unique things. They have higher highs, even though I might have more criticisms of them than I do with Look to the Lady. But I have it here at number 10. Number nine is another adventure thriller, which, to be fair, is far less grounded in reality and credibility than Look to the Lady, but more fun and more important to the series, and that is Sweet Danger, also called Kingdom of Death and The Fear Sign. And this is the book that introduces us to Campion's future wife, Amanda Fitton, and her family, as well as the Kingdom of Averna, which is like this ridiculously small and pretty useless piece of territory. Amanda's brother is ostensibly in control of once he can prove it and that is the primary basis for the mystery of this book albert and his friends are implied to be working for the british government to reclaim averna for britain which is located in suffolk in the village of pontisbright and this is a more action-packed adventure thriller than look to the lady this is when camping was still young and quite frankly more interesting as he was able to you know like swing from buildings and beat up criminal gangs with minimal effort and the plot here is admittedly a little vague but essentially someone is after the deeds to averna and the fittings like sort of know where they are and they know like certain pieces of information or where to find it um, there's a lot of fun in this one involving amanda as she's always experimenting with like radios and other technology she is very advanced for like a, a young woman and she's only 17 in this novel set in 1933 she would later become a major force in airplane engineering and she's just a very impressive woman for her day and i always enjoy campion's antics in this one and while i do have more faults with like the mechanics of sweet danger i can overlook them because of the excitement factor and because this is a very important novel for the series. I will say for me, the biggest knock is probably the ending that goes completely bonkers. And spoiler alert here, but the main villain, or at least like one of many main villains in this book, is Dr. Galley, who just goes completely bonkers at the end and tries to summon a demon. It, it's really ridiculous, and it's just too bizarre for words, but I mean, that's only at the end of the book, so I have Sweet Danger here at number nine. 
<laughs> number eight is an incredibly frustrating novel for me. I wish I could play it higher, but I can't for a very specific reason, and that is Death of a Ghost. And this book has so much potential to be like number three or so on this list, maybe even number one. It is primarily a traditional murder mystery, which is rare for Allingham. Campion attends the annual unveiling of a painting by the late artist John Lefcadio. This is a yearly tradition, as mandated by Lefcadio's will, that each year a previously stored away painting is to be revealed. At the ceremony, we get the traditional like lights go out, lights come on, and there's a dead body. And the dead body is Tommy Dakers, a young artist. This is the second murder shortly. Um, there there is a second murder shortly afterwards, and the plot of this is just fantastic. It's very strong and a very solid murder mystery. Tommy's art slowly begins to disappear for unknown reasons. It has all the setup of just like a really fun murder mystery. And we get to see Campion and Stanislaus Oates investigate like detectives i think that's something that's like frequently gets overlooked is that camping is not really like a detective in like the traditional sense we think of like poirot or lord peter whimsy or inspector allen but the mystery has this great twist and all the clues to get you there unfortunately there is a major knock for me and that is about roughly like halfway to two thirds into the book, the narration just like stops with the mystery and just outright tells the reader who the killer is before we get to the ending. It's incredibly frustrating. I have no idea why Marjorie Allingham did this, and it sucks all the momentum this book had. It's still a great novel and worth the read, but I just couldn't place it higher because of how frustrating that one moment is, and it comes in here at number eight. At number seven is a novel that I love, but it suffers from major credibility issues, and that is Police at the Funeral. And I'll say it, I love this book a lot, but it really is just too ridiculous to be like, in one of the top spots. Campion helps the Faraday family as several of them fall victim to fatal and increasingly ridiculous booby traps in their home. The main murder is of Uncle Andrew, whose death is the first to occur, and Uncle Andrew was found bound, shot, and floating in a stream. And Police at the Funeral is the quintessential mystery novel that just like throws credibility out the window for the sake of having like a really good mystery. The book is a lot of fun and it's very clever. Campion and Oates feature very prominently. This might be the novel that highlights their relationship the most. I enjoyed so much reading about these two like and awful like this awful Faraday family as they keep succumbing to booby traps. It reminds me a lot of like one of my favorite board games as a kid, 13 Dead End Drive, where you were like spring booby traps on characters to murder them off as much fun as this book is it really just is too ridiculous and outrageous i'm always willing to overlook some credibility issues for the sake of a good mystery but this one is simply a bridge too far and i also knock it slightly because the murder of uncle andrew is pretty much directly taken from a Sherlock Holmes short story. So I feel like I can't give Allingham too much credit for that. I mean, it really is just like pretty much lifted directly from it with like no changes made whatsoever. But Police at the Funeral is still a fun read. I enjoy it a lot. And it comes in at number seven. At number six, and beginning with this book, I think we're in what I would truly consider like the elite top tier Marjorie Allingham, Albert Campion novels, or mystery novels, or thrillers, or whatever you want to call them. And starting off with number six is the highest rated Campion novel that I would consider to be mostly thriller, and that is Traitor's Purse, also called The Sabotage Murder Mystery. And to be fair, there is a murder in this book, but it's not really the main conflict or the most interesting part. The, this book is set at the height of World War II and begins with an amnesiac Campion escaping from a hospital after he overhears police officers talking about how he is under arrest for assaulting an officer. Campion remembers almost nothing about his life or what he was doing. He gradually starts regaining a few memories. He does remember Amanda, who is his fiance in this book, a little bit and wonders if she's in love with another man. He also vaguely remembers Lug, who is hilariously masquerading as a news agent shop clerk. And Campion spends most of the novel completely in the dark 
of what he was actually doing. He knows it was like some kind of like wartime intelligence work. The reader and Campion are both totally in the dark in this one together. And if you can really feel the reader and Campion going on this journey together, it feels like Campion is on the same level as the reader and really like the only time in these books that happens. Campion is getting into all sorts of trouble here. It's really a, a lot of fun. He's on the run from the hospital. He's also the prime suspect in the murder. He later sucker punches in a police officer in the face. I mean, this is one of the best adventure thrillers written by a mystery author. Eventually, we get around to the actual problem here, which I will not spoil, but... Fun fact, Allingham made up this plot herself, but after the war was over, it was revealed that an enemy plot very similar to this one was actually in the works. And I probably enjoy Trader's Purse more than like at least the next book on the list, but I left it here because I just think like a good thriller shouldn't top a good murder mystery. I think the ceiling for a thriller is just lower than it is for a murder mystery. So I have Trader's Purse here at number six. At number five, a book similar in plot to Police at the Funeral, but a little better and a lot more realistic, and that is More Work for the Undertaker. And like Police at the Funeral, this book also features the murder of several members of a rather eccentric family, this time the Palinodes of Apron Street. And I just find this book to be a better version of Police at the Funeral. It's much more grounded and believable, and doesn't sacrifice the fun or the wackiness of the characters for the sake of a good mystery. It still has the good mystery. Lug is at his best here as... One of the suspects is his late sister's husband, whom Lug hates and is the local undertaker. And he's just like constantly involved in things that are like shady. And we don't really know what he's doing for most of the book, but, you know, it's just really <laughs> clever. And Lug throws no shortage of shade at his brother-in-law. The murder mechanics are good. This is a book with multiple murders in which it's somewhat questionable if they really are murders. Just like how the killer may have done it. More interesting to me here is the motive, as the Palinodes don't have a lot of money, and although they're weird and annoying, it doesn't like really appear anyone would want to murder them. They're all like pretty old and sick anyway, <laughs> they're probably not going to last too long. And the plot is nothing original like compared to like the mystery genre in general, but it's a strong plot that kept my attention throughout and featured Campion from start to finish, so I have more work for The Undertaker here at number 5. Number four is a book that I have this high more for its like relationship storylines, but the mystery is also very strong, and that is The Fashion in Shrouds. And this book introduces us to Campion's sister, Valentine, and what I believe is her only appearance in a novel, as well as her future husband, Alan Dell, and the return of Amanda Fitton, who works for Dell as an airplane engineer. We learn more about Campion and his sister and how they were both disinherited and neither really cares at all. Uh, Valentine is a fashion designer and the murder plot is tangentially related to the world of fashion. The plot begins with Campion discovering the body of famous actress Georgia Wells' former fiancé with Georgia being a major client of Val's. And to me, the most interesting parts of this book involve the dynamic between Campion and his sister and Campion and Amanda and Valentine and Alan. As these people, you know, get engaged, they break it off. They never were engaged. They get engaged again. It's kind of all over the place. The mystery plot, I find good it's strong and enjoyable and it's not like a mess, but there's something like a little bit off for me about it. There are several different plots sort of like running together, like Campion discovering the body. And there's another murder later on. There's also like this airplane stuff with Amanda and Alan and Val's fashion designs. They all come together in the end, but for most of the novel, it feels a little strange and they don't really seem to mesh together that well. It's a bit of a Franken plot where you just have like this piece and that piece, it, not in like a cleverish way. I mean, it's still pretty good. It's not like a, a disaster, but... I, I just feel it feels like Marjorie Allingham had too many ideas she wanted to squeeze into this book. But I don't mean to say this book isn't good or isn't fun because it is. It's number four on my list and I, I love reading it. I just would have preferred a more smoother narrative and tighter construction. But this is by no means a bad book. So I have The Fashion Shrouds here at number four. Number three is the book widely regarded as Campion's best novel, and while I agree it is a fantastic novel, I don't really consider it the best, nor did I really even consider it for the top spot, but 
here at number three is The Tiger in the Smoke. Alan Kim's writing is at its best in this book. It just feels like very special in this book as if she wrote it at the very peak of her talents. It's just absolutely mesmerizing. The plot features camping and investigating the wartime disappearance and possible reappearance of Martin Elgin Broad, who was believed to be dead. Martin was married to Meg, who is now engaged to Jeffrey Leavitt, and Martin is alleged to have returned, and we have this great opening with Campion and escorting Meg to the train station to see if this person really is Martin, and it goes all wrong, and chaos ensues. There's like this heavy fog. The atmosphere in these like opening chapters and passages is just so fantastic. I think it's probably like the best writing in any Marjorie Allingham novel. I love this book. I, I think it's fantastic but i'm not like so enamored with the plot there are large sections where we are away from camping and friends and those sections of the book are still very good and very interesting and very well written but i just wish we had more camping but this isn't a case where like camping is shelved either i mean this is not like one of those later career campions where he's barely in it i also take some issues with the ultimate culprit in this book being someone who is not prominently featured and i do question how solvable this mystery is i think you can kind of get there through like intuition but i'm not so sure you could actually like solve the situation via like the clues in the book but this book is spectacular it's a work of art and deserving of this high position here at number three. Number two is the book that sees the return of William Faraday, and that is Dancers in Mourning, also called Who Killed Chloe? This is a pretty solid murder mystery. Campion attends the theater with his old friend William Faraday, who returns from police at the funeral. The play is based on William's book, and the leader, the lead actor, Jimmy Soutain, is caught up in like a minor scandal where like pranks are pulled on him, and this causes him to become like disoriented and angry, he becomes very temperamental. It, it like throws him off his game, so to speak. And at his weekend house party, the actress Chloe Pye is murdered when Jimmy hits her with his car. Although it's quickly determined that she was already dead at that point. I find the characters in this book to be very strong and very interesting. It feels very much like a Niall Marsh novel with all these like overdramatic, selfish theater people skulking about. You know, you have actors, you have the playwright, you have like some stage staff. I love the way Alan Kim depicts Soutain as the pressure of his career and the pranks and the murder just pile up on top of him. You, you can feel his breakdown coming through several chapters. And everyone hated Chloe, so no one cares that she's dead. But it has an effect on Jimmy because he's not really at fault for her death. But everyone is just so quick to use the accident to like not have the murder investigation. And Soutain, you know, is angry about that. Campion and Log are both fantastic in this one. I think the murder mechanics are very strong. The reason why I don't have this one at number one is because I, I think this one has like a few small knocks against it the top book doesn't have. We're told fairly early on who the prankster is. When I feel like that could have been better to delay the reveal a little bit. We also have a late book murder I didn't need. And the solution is a bit mess. It, it could be tighter. It doesn't like unravel or go off the rails. But it's just not the clean sharp ending I think a top tier mystery novel at number one deserves. So I have Dancers in Mourning here at number two. At number one, the top-ranked Albert Campion novel, and my personal favorite as well, is Coroner's Pigeon, also called Pearls Before Swine. And I've talked at length about how much I love the post-World War II era of mystery novels, and Coroner's Pigeon is set during that time. It, it's technically set during the war, when Campion returns to London on a leave after spending time on the continent doing some type of like vague espionage activity for the allies he arrives home to find log and an old woman dumping a dead body in his bedroom and they believe he wouldn't be home that's why they bring the body there and this just leads to a fantastic mystery as campion cancels his leave to investigate the murder and this murder leads campion into a wide array of crimes both war related and not and like other Campion novels, Corner's Pigeon does feel like a bit like a Franken plot with all these like different elements that don't feel like they go together. The difference here is that those elements do come together in a satisfying way, and they feel very restrained. This is not a case of Allingham like just throwing random things together. It's a very calculated and well-developed plot. 
we have a lot of Lug in this book, who is probably one of my favorite Lug moments, is he's raising a pig during the war, and he cares so much about this pig, and it's just really a lot of fun. And I mean, the more Lug in a book, the better, honestly. I mean, he's criminally underused in some of these books. And Corner's Pigeon contains everything you would expect from an Albert Campion novel. It has a murder mystery, but it's also littered with little adventure thriller elements that all work. I love the depiction of wartime England in this book. We're constantly reminded about the Blitz and the air raids, even even the air raids like figure into the solution of the mystery. I love it when authors utilize the time setting not only for the setting, but as part of the plot as well. Campion is just exhausted in this book, and it represents certainly the soldiers during the war, but also England in general as just tired and worn out, but keeps going and going and going for as long as they have to. And Corner's Pigeon does everything I want it to and does everything extremely well. So I have it here at number one. And that is it for this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep up to date with the channel. S.S. Van Dyne's Philo Van series won the poll for the next books I will rank, so make sure you vote on the current ongoing poll to vote for the series after that. Next week, I will be reviewing Murder on the Orient Express, but not the book or film, the video game that came out last year. You don't need to have played the game to enjoy the video, and if you don't like video games, I would still encourage you to watch it. It won't be like super game heavy, but you'll be fine as long as you've read the book. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, Mystery Files.